What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So in today's video I am out here on my road glide and uh, kind of had the itch to go travel somewhere. I don't know, I'm kind of in a weird mood. I really want to just get on the bike and just go, but I just, I'm so indecisive. I can't determine where I want to go. I don't know what I want to see. I, I'm at a loss for words, but kind of just looked at the map and said, all right, well, I'll at least start with a day trip and uh, you know, let's look at the map here. Let's see what's two, three hours away, four or five hour round trip. Just kind of look at dealerships or whatnot that I haven't been to in my great state of Pennsylvania. So I'm actually on my way to Vreeland's Harley Davidson. It's in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. I've been to Bloomsburg probably about like a hundred times, but I've never seen a dealership or been to this dealership. So I figured I would start off on my way there. And uh, from there, I looked at a place called Horsepower Harley Davidson which is a little bit more north of Bloomsburg in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The actual horsepower Harley-Davidson is roughly like two hours and something for me. So I figured oh, I'll ride an hour or so, stop at Vreeland's in Bloomsburg, and then finish off the ride with another hour or so to the horsepower Harley-Davidson in Williamsport, and then kind of just figure out how I want to go home from there, make a nice little day trip out of it. You know, I really don't need to go to a Harley dealer, obviously. There'd be tons of other things to see. But luckily, traveling up this neck of the woods up north here in PA, the sights are absolutely beautiful. Kind of really don't mind not going somewhere to sightsee per se because the entire trip's going to be sightseeing. With that in mind, that's where I'm heading Freelands Harley-Davidson in Bloomsburg, PA. Figured I'd bring you guys along and kind of enjoy the, the ride with me, enjoy some sightseeing. So I'll pick it up here in a little bit when I get a little bit more out of town and a little bit more of unfamiliar sights. Well, here we are currently roasting ourselves in the great town of Tamaqua. I think this part of 309 should be on the top 10 uh, worst roads in Pennsylvania. I think they set the speed limit at 45 because the road's so freaking dangerous. If you go any faster than 45, you might blow out your kidneys. I don't want to sit in traffic. All I want to do is ride. Oh, and also for a quick update. Oh, we got the trains coming through town. That's maybe why we're getting held up a little bit. Or a train for that matter, I guess. And I have a film we're gonna eat. Oh yeah, nothing like another traffic light. All right, back to what I was saying. For those of you that watched my clutch adjustment video and those of you that commented saying my clutch wasn't slipping due to the adjustment, um, I found out what it was. It was the, uh, the oil that I was testing in my primary for my New Hampshire trip. Well, this is another kidney punch road. Also, ever since Mount Washington, I have gotten a slight rattle from my primary from if you watched part one where we stopped on that high point of the hill. Well, ever since I took off there, and you can kind of hear it in the video a little bit, I had this god-awful rattle when I went to take off and uh, you know, I wasn't lugging it any more than just trying to get the damn bike moving on that hill. Ever since then, if I've had the bike on any type of slight incline and I try to take off with it under a load, it would always rattle a little bit. I did some research. I think it's the compensator. As you can see, I have 9,700 miles on this thing. From what I hear, all the bikes after 2014 and newer, the Mount Rushmore bikes, all come from the factory with the Screaming Eagle compensator, which would have been a upgrade from what would have came in the twin cams. Now, with that being said, I see some things on forums and on the internet that say those Screaming Eagle compensators are still only good to roughly 10 to 15,000 miles before you start getting some type of wear or failure. So what I presume is wrong with mine, I think it's the actual compensator ramp piece. I was watching an old Cycle Fanatics video where Dave from JD Cycle Works was comparing a compensator ramp from a twin cam to a M8. And he said they pretty much have the same exact design. The only difference is the M8 compensator ramp is like half the thickness of a twin cam compensator ramp. 
I even saw something on Moonshine Harley Davidson where they showed their engineering team actually kind of like replicated the, the twin cam compensator ramp and made it like pretty much bulletproof strength. I don't know. I'm just assuming that's what's wrong with it because it's not really doing anything else that would make me think the compensator is bad. Like it's not clunking when I start it. It's not clunking when I shut it off. It's not like clunking any more than it would through the gears. When I start off on a slight hill, all I hear is a, a little bit of a rattle. And ever since I changed the oil in the primary, it has gotten better, which leads me to believe, I don't, I don't know what to believe actually, but maybe in due time it will correct itself. Most likely not. I don't know, we'll see. I only have like 100 miles on this oil change, so I don't know. People say those compensator ramps can fail and shatter, which concerns me. However, this is a completely stock 114. Uh, the only thing that I would technically have done to it is like a stage one uh, with the air cleaner and uh, headers and slip-ons. So with that being said, I don't think I should have to worry about the actual ramp just like blowing up and disintegrating which then would leave me stranded. Like I said, it's just a slight rattle. The rattle noise has gone down since I've changed oil in my primary. So I think what I'll end up doing is just kind of riding it out, see if it gets better or worse. The bike still is under warranty. So could I take it to Harley Davidson and have them rip it apart and fix it? Absolutely, that would be an option. However, if this thing's failing already with 10,000 miles, I'd why would I want to put something else back into it that might last another 10,000 miles and then when it goes in, then I'll be out of warranty. I think if I'm going to do anything with it, I'm going to fix the problem through and through and just put like a man o' war compensator in there. So I think that's about where I'm at with that. But I've been doing some research also on the EITMS, um, the engine temperature management system because that's something I've always left enabled, which a lot of people don't, which, it, you know, it is what it is. It's either your thing or not. Yeah, it sounds funky, feels funky, but I always looked at it as I always sit in a lot of traffic, no matter if I try to avoid it or not. So I always thought I was just doing the bike a little bit of justice by letting it shut the rear cylinder off to help try to cool everything. So anyway, I've been reading that a lot of people say if you run your EITMS, that puts a huge strain on your compensator. I don't know how true that is. I haven't talked to a mechanic or somebody with actual experience like that, but I figured, what the heck? Gosh darn, these roads are terrible. So I took it upon myself back to what I was saying. I disabled my EITMS just to kind of see if it would do anything. The noise would get better or worse. And uh, once again, it seems like it quieted it up a heck of a lot more. So between the oil change and uh, shut it, disabling the EITMS, seems like it got a lot quieter. So for now, I'm just gonna ride it, maybe take it a little bit easier on it, just so it doesn't break on me on the road anywhere, and just kind of monitor the situation and see what the deal is. And then, like I said, maybe this winter or something, just kind of put a man o' war compensator in and uh, hopefully that is the end of that. All right, so I'm just gonna set the cruise control here, let you guys see some sight and uh, catch back up with you guys later. See, right on cue, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Doesn't matter where the heck I go, I always, always get stopped in traffic. And it's things like this that makes my compensator freaking hate me.
so we're about a half mile from our exit and about seven minutes away from Vreeland's Harley-Davidson and we're gonna go for it because we can It's always interesting coming to different parts of your states and uh, just seeing like what they have and where everything's located. Got some nice greens in this part of the state, that's for sure. I can see the Harley sign up here on the right. So we are here at Vreeland's Harley-Davidson. Gonna hop off here and head inside. All right, so that was just a little quick stop at Vreeland's Harley-Davidson. I didn't film while I was in there because it was completely dead. I mean, it's a Wednesday at one o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, obviously most people are gonna be at work and stuff and you start getting out in these more uh, rural areas. You know everybody's at work so they're not gonna have time to go hang out at a Harley dealer during the middle of the week. But I stopped in, they had great hospitality, absolutely friendly staff, and uh, picked up a little poker chip for my poker chip collection. And uh, now we are on our way to Horsepower Harley Davidson which is about another hour from Vreeland, and uh, I'll pick it up a little bit later. getting off 180 I believe that was and we are about two minutes away from horsepower Harley-Davidson here in Williamsport Pennsylvania it says a half mile I don't see a Harley sign yet so we'll see There we go, there's a sign. All right, so this is probably gonna be the same deal. I am most likely not going to record in the dealership. Oh, how nice of you to finally turn green when all the traffic's coming. Yeah, this looks like a great intersection here. Alright, so I'll go in and check it out and let you guys know. So Horsepower Harley-Davidson, they had a lot of bikes and that was pretty much it. Overpriced like everybody else. No one really bothered me, which is always kind of nice. Got some poker chips and that was that. So I uh, stopped at a local sheets here and topped off because I was getting below quarter tank. And now I'm just gonna truck on home all two hours and 12 minutes. So uh, pretty hot out here. It's over 90 something degrees. Once again, thanks for tuning in on this short little video. Don't really know what it is, but at least you guys got to come along for a little bit of a ride. 
and got to sightsee a little bit. But if you watched this long, I thank you very much. Make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos. With that being said, make sure to ride safe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace!